Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the architecture or the things which are needed to spin up a virtual machine in Azure. All right, this will come uh, in the architectural concept series because we are not just spinning a virtual machine, but we'll be talking about all the aspects, all the related resources which are required or can be used or should be used in order to achieve an uh, architecture, which is uh, which is uh, good as per the security, which is good as per the networking storage or any other aspect which is involved as per your customer's requirement. All right, so you can see this uh, Visio diagram on your screen, which which I have borrowed from Microsoft and uh, here you can see there is a single virtual machine so the very first thing is the resource group in order to create any resource in azure we gotta create the resource group. that's why the symbol is here this is the resource group symbol and we all know what the resource group is it's a logical container uh, where we keep the resources which are closely associated or share the same life cycle. It totally depends on your architecture, how you want to assign the resource group to your resource, but it is mandatory to create a resource group when you create a resource. So this is the very first requirement that we're going to have as per the architectural concept, the naming convention, or you may it depends you may be putting your virtual network in one resource group your storage in one resource group your compute in another resource group or you may be segregating as per the applications that you are running or maybe as per the team that you have so it totally depends and as per the naming convention you can figure it out what kind of resource group it is right few people also use like for east us2 it is like they, they do ES2, then uh, hyphen, they give the name of the application. For example, if it's a Salesforce, not the Salesforce, that's the SaaS application. But let's suppose any application, let's suppose it's called Magic. They, they do ES2 hyphen MG hyphen, whatever, uh, wherever, things like that. So the very first resource is the resource group. Now we have virtual machine here. In virtual machine, we know there are like different SKUs are available as per the performance required. Okay. When we create it, we need to select the size. That's what the I'm talking about. And you have all kind of uh, images available in the marketplace from where you can select whether it's a Linux or the Windows machine. We should have, or we also choose the region. I think they have not mentioned any region here, but these things will fall under a region. Even your resource group need a region and your virtual machine needs a region. So you got to select the region as per the lowest latency or as per your customer's requirement. Okay. Now you can see on this VM, they are like OS disk is attached, data disk is attached. It could be a temp disk. So in total, inside a VM, we can have three types of disk, OS, data, and temp disk. OS is where your operating system is installed. Data is your persistent disk that you have additionally attached to your VM. Temporary is the uh, temporary storage, which is on the host machine. Uh, it gives you very high IOPS, but it is not for the persistent storage, but you can store for things like you don't care if you lose it okay so to this vm these three kind of disks can be attached now if you go in further you could have a managed disk or unmanaged disk it is always recommended to use a managed disk because there is no admin overhead you're not managing the storage account moreover it is more resilient as per because everything is taken care of by the Microsoft. Okay, and if you go further, these everything is in the storage, whether it's managed disk or unmanaged disk. 
you may be managing the storage or you may not depend on the kind of disk you have but there are two kind of storage that you can opt for for better performance for high io we go for the premium one which is on ssds and we do have the standard you gotta have you have standard also two kinds standard hdd and standard ssd okay so these things are required now let's come to the nick network you cannot create a vm without a virtual network so very first thing is the virtual network and virtual network is segmented into various subnets we all know that so you can see this is the virtual network this is the subnet and this is the public ip address which is required if you're trying to access from outside for example you have created a vm and you have opened the 3389 port and you want to access that vm from your own local host you need a public ip address and there are so many other reasons for which you need a public ip address so this is one resource this is another one subnet it is a part of virtual network but you need it right uh, on the nick you could have a dynamic or static private ip addresses right uh, and uh, same goes with the public IP addresses. It could be static and dynamic, okay? Uh, we all know five IP addresses are reserved by the Azure in each and every subnet. So uh, you can also uh, update the DNS on the subnet or uh, on the VNet or on the NIC level. You can do that, uh, okay, cool. Now, there is one more thing which is called NSG right here, you can see. This is the network security group by which you control the network traffic. It can be attached to the NIC or it can be attached to the subnet. Okay. Cool. Let me clear this out. Subnet. So these things are required as per the network perspective. These things are required as per the storage perspective. Now let's talk about the operations perspective. There is a diagnostic log. When we create a VM, there is a storage account needed for the diagnostics. Enable monitoring and diagnostics include basic health metrics, diagnostics infrastructure logs, and boot diagnostics. Boot diagnostics can uh, help you diagnose boot failures if your VM gets into non-bootable state. Create an Azure storage account to store the logs. Okay. Now, uh, I don't think they have given there is also called something like you know availability which will fall under the operations along with the monitoring this is the monitoring now to make your VM available so that it would your operations would not impact it because of planned maintenance or unplanned maintenance we have availability sets we do have availability zones now for the better uh, sla uh, and for bcdr we do have uh, backups native azure backups that you can use to back up your virtual machine we do have asr this is a wonderful service for the uh, site replication you can replicate your vm to another region you can do that okay so these these two services are also falls under the operations and you can take the benefit of these two services now uh, there's another thing called vm state you may have vm in the in the in the start mode or in the stop mode okay in the stop mode, of course, they would not be charged, but you, you're still paying for the disk and things like that. If you delete it, then you're not paying for anything. But remember, when you delete the VM, the remaining resources which are required to spin up a VM like NIC, the disk, this thing will not be deleted. Public IP address, NSGs, they will stay still be there. So if you don't want all other resources, you need to delete everything. If you have your test VM inside the test resource group, you should delete the resource group inst instead of going each and every, uh, deleting each and every resources. Okay. All right. 
Now, if you stop the VM from the portal, it goes as deallocated, where the charges are not applied. But if you're doing it from the uh, inside the VM, it would be like stopped, where charges would be incur. Okay. All right. Uh, after operations, we can talk about cost, which is very important. For the VM considerations, we can have various kind of uh, virtual machines like pay as you go, where we use machine and for whatever time we are using the machine, we are paying for that amount of time. This is not, this is the uh, uh, normal charge that we have to pay. But if you wanna have a discount, you can go for spot instances or spot VMs, Azure spot VMs or Azure reservations. If you already know minimum amount of compute that you require to run your operations, you can go and reserve those instances for one year to three years. Okay, and you can save money. Same goes with the spot instances. If you are okay, or if you have the workloads where interruption can be accepted, then you can run the spot instance and save money. Now, if we need to talk about security, security considerations, Azure provide a wonderful tool, Azure Security Center, which takes care of the entire subscription and give you all kind of recommendations related to security. You should uh, onboard your subscription for that. And they, they do have two kind of uh, subscription in security center there is a basic there's a standard basic is almost free that you can use but to maximize the benefit of security center you gotta opt for standard for which you have to pay a good amount of money okay now if you have enabled the security center it can let you know if your machines are patched or not hardened enough or some critical patches or updates are missing if your machine doesn't have an anti-malware or antivirus, uh, this will help you. This will add, send you the notifications and recommendations. You can also uh, use RBAC, of, uh, which is provided by Azure itself. This is a wonderful, wonderful uh, resource a tool by which you can control the access and in the modern world or the world of cloud this is something very very important as compared to the physical where physical world where the perimeter security was more important but here the identity security is more important and RBAC will give you that uh, edge by which you can give the access to the to the resources which are required not the entire subscription or the virtual network or the resource groups okay least privilege principle of least privilege is applied for these kind of securities or the accesses so uh, this was the brief video about the uh, virtual machine in azure and uh, i hope this is informative for you guys and thank you for watching you have a good day bye bye